And results from Iraq's general elections has sent shockwaves through the country in the leadist Cyrone coalition led by Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr and his communist allies. They have won 54 seats in the 329-seat parliament. Uh, he was followed closely by Hadi al-Amiri's Fatah coalition, which is uh, known to be pro-Iran. In third place was incumbent Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi, who conceded defeat. We are ready to work and cooperate on forming the strongest government for Iraq free of corruption, hateful sectarianism and a government which is capable of preventing a return of terrorism and keeping the country away from sliding into marginal conflicts. So what happens now? Al-Sadr was not a candidate in this election and uh, therefore cannot be prime minister. Expect him to play kingmaker. He has indicated his uh, willingness to work with the Sunnis and the Kurds. There is even an outside chance that Abadi could return as Prime Minister, but his pro-Iran stance could be a problem. Al-Sadr is a nationalist who has spoken out against the U.S. and Iranian presence in his country. He believes that Iraq should be run by Iraqis and there is no place for armed proxies of outside powers. In recent times, Al-Sadr has reached out to the estranged Sunni community and even met Saudi Prince Salman, who has pr promised to help rebuild Iraq. He has also indicated he is okay with U.S. troops training the Iraqi army and helping secure the country. Iran is not impressed, saying it would not allow liberals and communists to govern Iraq. The next 90 days are crucial as al-Sadr will have to maneuver to form a coalition during which compromises and deals will have to be struck. Now, Most importantly, Sadr will have to outmaneuver Iran which is determined to push the case of its proxy, the Fatah coalition. Iran hopes to use its clout to install its proxy in Baghdad and see the departure of 5,000 US troops in Iraq. Al-Sadr will now have to move smartly and fast if he is to avoid a political deadlock.